So I reached out to Best Value Backs to talk to them about maybe getting a vacuum chamber. This is what they sent me. I think we're gonna have some fun. I can think of so many cool videos to use these tools in, but today we're gonna to start with this stabilizing chamber. And some gloves, and a scale, a vacuum tube. Oh, and I want my mat. I gotta move all this stuff. Better. So what we're doing today is called stabilizing, not casting. The point is, is that we wanna remove all the air out of an object and replace it with resin. In order to do that, we, well, let me just show you. This is a piece of acacia wood. It's got a lot of holes in it, a bunch of voids. And if you were here, you could feel how light it was. It measures a 114 grams. Let's remember that. Enter the stabilizing chamber. It is basically just a large tube that is airtight and we can put our block of wood inside. I'm gonna take my stabilizing resin, this is called cactus juice, and I'm gonna pour enough of it in to fully cover the block of wood. And you'll notice something happens, <laughs> which is the wood floats. So that's complicated, right? So what I did is I welded up this little piece of steel here, and I can just use it to weigh down the wood. All right, and you can see that the wood is completely submerged in the stabilizing resin. And then we just put the lid over the top. It just rests on the top. The vacuum. And turn on the vacuum pump. Uh, the wood bobbed up and push the piece of steel to the side. So, I need more weight. That should keep that piece of wood down. Let's try this again. Turn on the vacuum. Let off the bleed valve. And let it draw a vacuum. See all those bubbles? That's just air escaping from the wood. The point of stabilizing is that we take something that's full of air and we use the vacuum chamber to suck all of the air out and then replace that air with stabilizing resin. And so it makes the object more dense and heavy. Been an hour and a half and as you can see the bubbles are still coming out you're really supposed to wait until the bubbles completely stop but I, it's getting late here and I need to move on and the fact that they're still coming out of here tells you how much air was actually in this block of wood so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the vacuum And so everywhere that air was before we started has now sucked in resin. And this is the part where we wait. Now you're supposed to wait twice as long as you were evacuating air from. So I sucked air out of this block of wood for an hour and a half, which means that I'm gonna let it sit here in the resin for three hours. All we're going to do is take out our weights. And this is going to go right here on some aluminum foil. There we go. Toaster oven set for 200 degrees. And we're going to leave that in there. 45 minutes. So, 45 minutes in the oven. Let it cool off a bit. Let's see what we've got. See? How we did. You can definitely see some of the resin that seeped out of the bottom here. 
but the rest of it should be in all of the holes. That should be a stabilized piece of wood. Best way to tell is to see how much weight we've added. 159. 45 grams of weight. That's um that's like 45 hummingbirds, right? We just added 45 hummingbirds to this. I think I'm right in saying that. So what we've done is we've taken a wood like this acacia that literally was garbage. The only thing I could do with it was throw it away just because of how soft and spongy it was and turn it into... Now at this point you're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Can we stabilize bread? Let's find out. Two slices of cheap wheat bread. 50 hummingbirds. Let's see how much we can add to that. The other thing that's really nice about this is the resin is reusable. Whatever doesn't get soaked up can be used over and over and over and over and over and over again. You don't need to use new resin each time. I bet this is not what they were thinking when they sent me a vacuum chamber. I imagine this is going to take some time. I'm going to let it do its thing. I evacuated air for two and a half hours and then let this sit in the pot overnight. I have no idea if this is just going to disintegrate when I try to take it out. There we go, there's our two pieces. One slice in the heel. That's an interesting look to it, doesn't it? You see that? Almost kind of crystallized. at 200 degrees for 45 minutes. Piece of bread, stabilized. Toasted it a little bit, you can see. It's quite hard. And we definitely added some weight. So that's the process of stabilizing. It's very different from casting. It's not for pouring resin over the top of a material. It's for infusing it. Uh, like adding its structure to something that doesn't have one. I found the stabilization process to be really fun and it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Uh, one of the nice things about stabilized woods is it allows you to turn or work these woods that are super punky or soft or spalted. The other thing that's really nice about it is if you were to pour resin over the top of this type of wood before it had been stabilized, the air in the wood is actually going to create bubbles in the resin. And so a lot of times what you'll do is you'll stabilize the piece of wood before, and then when you pour resin over the top of it, you don't get bubbles coming up from the wood itself. And so that helps with a clearer casting if you're going to be fusing wood and resin together. Uh, a lot of times you'll see those, they're called worthless wood blanks and it's stabilized wood and resin together and that's why they do that. Uh, or you could stabilize bread because you wanted to see if it even worked. <laughs> and as crazy as it sounds, it's really hard. It didn't even, it didn't even ding it. I have no idea what you could do with this, but if you have an idea or a suggestion for a future project with the stabilizing chamber, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.